Right, so this is a Harvard FT442. We managed to find it again with a really good grid reference. Keep an eye out for craters. So that's all that's left of that. This is a similar to uh, the other guys, a Czech pilot, Sergeant Julius Safranco, a uh, Harvard trainer. This was on and 30th of November 1944. Again, he'd come out of, or was descending towards an air base in Shropshire to Hill, Turn Hill, sorry. And he basically, again, as a headwind, he'd miscalculated where he was. He nosed down through the zero visibility of the cloud, and unfortunately, he hit this spot here. You can see the crater around you. Uh, unfortunately, he was killed in this accident. Again, I'll put some pictures of the aircraft up. Um, very sad indeed, but you can see a few remains there of some of the burnt wreckage. A North American Harvard trainer was built in greater numbers than most combat aircraft during World War II, 17,096 being produced. By the end of the war, over 5,000 had been supplied to British and Commonwealth Air Forces. As conflict became inevitable, the Royal Air Force expansion programme demanded a massive increase in pilot training, and to meet this end, the Empire Air Training Scheme was established. The Royal Air Force soon turned to the United States to require the trainer aircraft needed to equip the scheme. The Harvard was one of the first American aircraft ordered by the RAF when a contract for 200 was placed in June 1938. British purchasing contracts reached 1100 before American lend-lease arrangements began. Some of the first aircraft were delivered to the United Kingdom, but soon after the outbreak of war, the majority of flying training units were moved to Canada, southern Rhodesia and the United States. This made room for operational aircraft in Great Britain and provided safer conditions for training. Harvards were gradually withdrawn from Royal Air Force service in the 1950s. Czech pupil pilot Sergeant Julius Safranco was killed when his Harvard trainer crashed on Shining Tor in low cloud on the 30th of November 1944. Beginning at a descent to base at RAF Turn Hill in Shropshire based on his calculations, Sergeant Safranco nosed down for the zero visibility of the cloud. However, a headwind had slowed him down and he was still over the last of the Pennine Hills and not just past Stoke as he might have thought. <laughs> 